Welcome everyone to another edition of the Classic Comic Archive, a series where I recap and review many of Marvel Comics' most seminal early issues. Our story for today is The Amazing Spider-Man Issue 3 from July of 1963. This issue marks the first appearance of longtime Spider-Man villain, Dr. Octopus. Unlike the previous two issues, Issue 3 features only one self-contained story, but also includes a memorable guest appearance from the Human Torch of the Fantastic Four. Our issue begins as three crooks attempt to steal a large safe from a warehouse at night. One of the thieves halts the heist to investigate an unnerving noise, but is quickly told off by an overconfident accomplice. Yet the crook's keen ears did not deceive him, as suddenly the visage of a certain wall-crawling hero projects itself onto a nearby surface. The three thieves are rightfully frightened as Spider-Man then suddenly emerges from the shadows and easily subdues them. While being beaten up is bad enough, Spider-Man makes certain the three crooks get their just desserts, as he's created an inescapable net for them out of his webbing. A net that the police quickly discover. Watching from afar as the crooks are taken into custody, we see that Spider-Man has outfitted his suit with a special device that projects a spider signal, one not dissimilar from Batman's. Also new is an uncharacteristically arrogant attitude towards crime fighting. It seems that since defeating the Vulture and the Tinkerer in the last issue, no other threat has risen to challenge Spider-Man's power. Our hero is almost disappointed in this and secretly hopes he'll encounter such a foe in the near future. But as the saying goes, be careful what you wish for. The issue then shifts focus to an atomic research center at the outskirts of the city. Here we meet Dr. Otto Octavius, otherwise known by his nickname Dr. Octopus, a brilliant atomic researcher who has invented a harness of four mechanical arms that allows him to experiment with volatile material safely. We see Dr. Octavius in the middle of such an experiment as something goes horribly wrong. A massive explosion suddenly rocks Octavius's laboratory, spewing hazardous material across the room and gravely injuring the scientist. Dr. Octavius is fortunately rescued in time and rushed to a hospital where he falls into a days-long coma. While he's asleep, physicians run tests on Octavius and attempt to remove the mechanical arms he was wearing at the time of the accident. Unfortunately the tests show that Dr. Octavius has suffered severe brain damage and his mechanical arms have become strangely fused to his body. Dr. Octavius eventually awakens from his coma, but not as the man he was only days prior. In the accident Octavius was exposed to a massive amount of radiation. Radiation that has altered his mind and transformed him into an evil version of himself. Now only identifying as Dr. Octopus. The newly sinister scientist soon discovers that his mechanical arms have practically become extensions of himself after the accident. As if they were his natural limbs. Yet unlike his natural limbs, his four mechanical arms possess immense strength, enough that he is able to break free of his iron barred observation room. But before we have a chance to witness the true menace of Dr. Octopus, our story shifts to the office of J. Jonah Jameson, publisher of the Daily Bugle newspaper. Inside, Jameson is instructing young photographer and secret superhero Peter Parker to capture photographs of Dr. Octopus, as the famous scientist's injury has evidently made headlines around the city, yet not even Jameson's best men can secure a photo. While Jameson does not know how Peter is able to secure such elusive photographs, such as those he took of the Vulture in the last issue, the shrewd publisher recognizes the teenager's talent and is willing to pay a premium for his services. Of course, Peter is happy to accept such a well-paying job and sets off to find Dr. Octopus as the amazing Spider-Man. Our hero arrives at the hospital where Dr. Octopus had been admitted, but finds it oddly locked and free of any patients. Investigating further, Spider-Man begins stealthily wall-crawling towards a clamorous window. Peering inside, Spider-Man is shocked to see that Dr. Octopus has abducted several hospital staff members and forced them to procure for him scientific equipment, the purpose of which is yet unknown. One of the staff members demands that the mad scientist release him and his co-workers. A plea that Dr. Octopus takes all too literally, as with the incredible strength of his mechanical arms, Dr. Octopus effortlessly raises the staff member high in the air and prepares to throw him out of the window. At this point, Spider-Man decides he's observed for long enough and swings into the room, safely knocking the staff member out of the grasp of Dr. Octopus's tentacles. Yet Dr. Octopus isn't intimidated by the wall crawler's power, as he promises the confident hero a particularly memorable bout of punishment. 
Spider-Man lunges to strike Dr. Octopus, but even the amazingly agile hero isn't prepared for the sheer speed of the villain's tentacles, which pound him square in the chest. Spider-Man shrugs off the blow as a lucky punch, and manages to surprise Dr. Octopus with a quick web shot that tangles up two of his tentacles. Yet Spider-Man isn't quick enough to web up the other two tentacles, as they powerfully thrust their deadly pincers towards him. Spider-Man manages to catch the two tentacles before they can strike him, but the effort is wasted as their strength matches his. As Spider-Man struggles to keep the tentacles from jabbing him, we see that Dr. Octopus has mustered the mechanical strength to snap the webbing that had tangled his other tentacles. A feat of strength yet unseen in this series. With all four of his tentacles once again free, Dr. Octopus effortlessly tangles up the weary Spider-Man within a web of his own. Triumphant over his foe, Dr. Octopus takes a moment to mock Spider-Man's failure, and assures the hero that the power of a spider is nothing compared to that of the Atom, of which he is the master. Having no use for the wall crawler, Dr. Octopus tosses the hero out of the window from which he came, and continues work on his sinister plot. Meanwhile, our weakened hero recovers from his fall, yet the true damage done to him is that of his confidence. Having been fairly beaten for the first time, Spider-Man wonders if Dr. Octopus is simply too great of a threat for him to face again. But we don't have any more time to watch our hero sulk, as the issue shifts focus back to Dr. Octopus and his evil scheme. We see the mad scientist travel to the Atomic Research Center where he had once worked, and where his life-altering accident had occurred. Using his telescopic tentacles, Dr. Octopus is able to breach the facility through an unlocked window on the second floor. Traversing through the research center, Dr. Octopus is able to disguise his tentacles as ceiling pipes, a trick that evidently fools the station's armed security. Dr. Octopus eventually reaches his destination. The technical nucleus of the facility. Dispatching the control room's operators, Dr. Octopus takes command of the station, and begins tinkering with its controls to suit his evil needs. Evidently Dr. Octopus's needs are not compatible with OSHA regulations, as we see the station's technicians flee in terror, as their workplace becomes an irradiated safety hazard. A contingent of armed hazmat workers are sent in to stop Dr. Octopus, but their advance is halted as the villain has activated numerous electronic barriers across the facility. Without a way in, the hazmat workers abandon their effort and contact higher-ups. Those higher-ups end up being the nation's foremost military minds, yet even they struggle to find a solution. Until they can, they order that the facility be locked down. No one can go in or out. The issue then shifts focus back to Peter Parker, who we see has been sulking in his defeat for hours. The teenager's mope is interrupted by a phone call from J. Jonah Jameson, who asks Peter where his photos of Dr. Octopus are, but the dejected photographer lets Jameson know that he doesn't have any, and likely never will. Aunt May attempts to comfort her worrisome nephew, but Peter rejects the offer and heads to school. How Peter is only now going to school after already having fraught Dr. Octopus and sulked for hours, is beyond me. Peter runs into some of his classmates at school, but ignores them as they try to talk to him. He does however overhear them say that the governor has asked the Fantastic Four to defeat Dr. Octopus. The Fantastic Four are apparently busy with another matter though, so have instead only sent the Human Torch to help and speak at a school assembly. It might seem strange that the Human Torch would be speaking at a high school assembly, while Dr. Octopus is still wreaking havoc at an atomic research center, but we learn that the Torch has recently exhausted his flame powers, and won't be able to fight the mad scientist for another few days. Peter attends the Human Torch's assembly, where the high-flying hero demonstrates some of his powers, and ends with a brief motivational speech about determination and perseverance. The Torch's words evidently stir up something within Peter, who realizes that with enough courage and grit, he can defeat Dr. Octopus. Peter rushes back home, suits up as Spider-Man, and heads to the Atomic Research Center. Once there, the hero finds the facility guarded by armed sentries. To get past them undetected, Spider-Man fashions a makeshift human slingshot using his webbing and two trees. He launches himself high above the guards and lands safely on the facility's roof unseen. While Spider-Man may have been able to easily slip past the guards, he doesn't have the same luck against numerous security cameras outfitted across the research center, all of which are being monitored by Dr. Octopus. Eager to get rid of the meddling hero, Dr. Octopus commandeers a control panel and turns the facility into a death trap. Spider-Man soon finds himself ambushed by the station's machinery, but is fortunately agile enough to dodge his foe's attacks. 
Realizing he must have been seen on hidden security cameras, Spider-Man begins crawling on the facility's ceiling, out of range of the cameras, as he travels deeper into the station to confront Dr. Octopus. Unable to defeat Spider-Man from within his control room, Dr. Octopus decides to track down and once again triumph over the hero himself. Yet Spider-Man has a plan of his own, as he travels to the station's chemistry laboratory and quickly crafts a pair of odd contraptions from a chemical solution, some vials, and some electrical wire. With this contraption in tow, Spider-Man sets out to find Dr. Octopus, but doesn't realize that the villain has found him first and is stalking him from behind. The mad scientist lunges at the hero with his mechanical arms, but Spider-Man's trademark spider senses warn him in time, and he is able to dodge the attack and loop one of his contraptions around two of Dr. Octopus's tentacles. Yet the mad scientist does not hesitate to strike again, and is able to land a powerful punch to the hero's head. While in that moment Dr. Octopus may have been able to deal a finishing blow to our hero, the villain soon finds himself distracted as we see that the chemical solution Spider-Man had crafted has fused two of his arms together. While these two tentacles can no longer grasp onto their foe, Dr. Octopus laughs off Spider-Man's clever ploy, as they still possess enough blunt force strength to pummel him. Using his two good tentacles and the powerful club that formed from the two now fused, Dr. Octopus is able to corner the struggling Spider-Man. Yet the quick-thinking hero seizes onto Dr. Octopus's two good tentacles, giving him an opportunity to launch a web blast square onto the mad scientist's glasses. Yet this trick only gives Spider-Man a momentary reprieve, as Dr. Octopus quickly removes his glasses and uses his mechanical limbs to draw in Spider-Man, so that he can finish off the wall crawler using his own arms. Yet in a daring display of incredible speed, Spider-Man is able to free himself from Dr. Octopus's grasp and simultaneously land a powerful punch that cleanly knocks out the mad scientist. Now fearing the menace of an awakened Dr. Octopus, Spider-Man takes the opportunity to solidly web up his foe's tentacles. Soon after, the sentries from outside enter the facility, as they had heard the calamity of the epic fight within. Using his spider signal, our hero alerts the sentries to the unconscious body of Dr. Octopus, who is firmly encased in a net of webbing. Confident that the authorities can handle the villain from then on, Spider-Man leaves the installation, but sets out to finish one last task in his costumed identity. Using his tracking power, Spider-Man is able to locate the Human Torch to a nearby hotel. He travels to the hotel and Wall crawls up to the Torch's room, where he greets the fellow hero as he's being visited by a doctor. It seems that the Torch had not truly exhausted his flames in battle, but had simply caught a cold that was dampening his powers. Spider-Man tells the Torch that he needn't worry about Dr. Octopus anymore, and also thanks him for giving him the courage needed to defeat the villain, although the Torch doesn't know what he's talking about. The issue subsequently ends as we see the Human Torch return to Peter's school the next day and give a full demonstration of his powers. We also finally see someone give Spider-Man the credit he's due, although it's ironically Peter's classmate Flash Thompson, perhaps the greatest menace of his civilian life as Peter Parker. Well that concludes the story for this issue. Marvel has included a few pages of extra material. The first is a surprise pin-up page displaying Spider-Man in a dynamic pose. Pause the video if you would like to take an extended look at Steve Ditko's great artwork. The last two pages are the letter pages, where Marvel has printed fan letters they've received since the publishing of the last issue, although these letter pages cover Amazing Spider-Man issue 1. The letter pages gave Marvel an opportunity to respond to the praise, criticism, and suggestions they'd received about their stories. While I will not be reading the letter pages aloud, please take a moment to look and see what readers of the time thought of issue 1 of this series. It's certainly an interesting experience almost 60 years later. And with that, we've concluded Amazing Spider-Man issue 3 and another episode of the Classic Comic Archive. But as always, I would like to offer a brief review of this issue. Overall, I thought that this was the best issue in the series so far. Perhaps I'm just a sucker for action over melodrama, but this issue really had me on the edge of my seat. Well, as much as a 60-year-old comic can. One of my biggest gripes with the last issue was the lack of menace that the Vulture presented to Spider-Man. But I certainly had no such issue with Dr. Octopus. His fights with Spider-Man felt visceral and dynamic, and you could really tell that Spider-Man had met his match. With so much hindsight decades on, I'm excited to know that Dr. Octopus will be making many more appearances in this series. 
With all that being said, I do wonder if the two-story format that had been used in the preceding two issues was a bit limiting. I'm just not sure that 10 to 14 pages is enough time with both Spider-Man and his foe to craft a compelling and exciting story like the one we saw today. In any case, let me know what you thought of this issue and the video, and feel free to suggest other classic comics for me to cover. Thanks for watching.